Hello everyone, this is Al Ahmad Gaib Biasad from Alstar, and this time we are going to learn about functions in R. Now, most functions require one or more inputs, which are called the arguments. While a particular function may have only a number of arguments. Now, when we say a function that has one or more arguments, like for example, the main function we have in my tutorial in basic statistics computation, that is the fifth tutorial. The main function here will can have, I mean, can have two or more arguments inside its parentheses. Say, for example, let's define first a vector x with values, say, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, say, that one. Enter that, and if I say the mean of the x is this one. Now, I only have one argument here. So let's try to input another argument. We can input another argument if, say, for example, like what I, like what we did in um, basic statistics computation in my fifth tutorial. If you haven't watched that, you can look for that. Okay, now. If we have here another value of our vector which is not a number, say let's enter that, and if we compute for the mean of x, we can get not a number value also. Now, for us to ignore this not a number value in the vector x, we can input another argument in our mean. And that is na.rm set it to true. So here we have one, I mean two arguments inside our mean. And so if you enter that, you can get here 3.5. So therefore, we can say that mean function can have one or more arguments. Let's try help for mean. As you can see here, the mean can have one, two, three, three functions inside it. However, there are still period here in which maybe can mean further arguments passed to or from other methods. So therefore, mean can have one or more functions inside it. Now, for a particular function, we can have a squared function. A squared function is actually a particular function because it can only have one function inside. Say for example squared, then the values here, I mean the arguments rather, yes, the arguments, the argument inside it is only one. Say x. You can have these values, you can have the squared of all the values inside it. And you can also have that the square of not a number is also not a number. I don't know why is that. Okay, now that is actually the function square, which is a particular function. Now let me introduce you to another function, the sequence function, which is sec. Okay. Now the arguments inside is should at least be two arguments and those are from and to. This is actually a sequence of numbers from a value here to a value here and is incremented by one. Say for example, I want to have a sequence from one to 10. There you go. Now, this is just equivalent, I mean, equivalent okay, to 1 colon 10. That is just equivalent to that one. If you enter that, there you go. And try, let's try this. There you go. It is just the same. 
Now, sequence can have one more argument inside it. And that is the argument by, in which by represents a an increment on your sequence. Okay. So if you want to set your increment to two, and you want it to end until ten, and you want to start it from one, if you enter that. Have this one three five seven nine. Okay. Now, another um, argument that you can replace for by is the length out. This is, I mean, from to a length length out. Okay. There you go. So this is a sequence of length that out numbers from to two. Length that out, this means that the sequence consists of a value here. What, how much uh, number are you going to input here is, will represent the uh, division of your sequence from the two, the value here. So, for us to um, understand more, let's say set our length that out to 4 and start from 1 to 10. If you enter that, you can have this one. So, why is that we have 1, 4, 7, 10? This is because we have a sequence from 1 to 10 that is, consists of 4. So, we have 1, 4, 7, 10. That's 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay? Now, when um, when you are going to input this kind of um, function, you have here an argument say one, ten, and four. Now, if you have this kind of function, you may say that four can either represent an increment by four, yes, or you can also say that this 4 could be a value of length that out argument which should represent how many division of this 10 should be. However, R read it as an increment. And so if you enter that, you can have this 159. As you can see, we have here 1 first plus 4 it is equal to 5 plus 4, it is equal to 9. There you go. Now before I end this tutorial, I want to introduce you the repeat function also. So if I have here x, I mean, we have our x already, yes. So if I say, I want, the, this is the, the, what is the repeat function. So if I say, I want to repeat x, twice that's how you input it and if you enter that you can have this one two three four five six and a that's not a number then one two three four five six not a number which is this one so hey guys mark it now however um you can also use i mean okay that is a function repeat now Going back here in the sequence function, okay, if we have this one, the 4 could either mean a, what is this, in a value of pi or a length of oh, 4. However, this could also, um, when the, what is this, when the arguments, when the name of the arguments are provided, the order in which the arguments are included is no longer important. Say if we, I can input that, say, I want it to buy increment it by four. I mean, by four. Yes. And then I want to start it from one. And I want to end it to ten. Okay. There you go. So if I input that, there you go. I have here a sequence from one to ten, 
incremented by 4. And therefore, we can say that if the name of the arguments is provided, I mean, are, are provided, then we can say that the order does not matter at all. So that is, guys. This is Al-Ahmad Gaid Thanks for watching.